This is Look West, a podcast from California's Assembly Democrats. Sometimes work can be fun. I'm Jen Hardy with Look West. My assignment for this episode, and let's be honest, I definitely volunteered for this assignment, was to spend a day with pets and their parents at a pet wellness event with Assemblymember Miguel Santiago. Santiago wrote the Dog and Cat Bill of Rights to help Californians be responsible pet families. More on that in a moment. Back to our day surrounded by animals and their people. Hi, do you have an appointment? Yes. Okay, your first name? Andrea. Okay. That morning in Boyle Heights, the line of people and their pets stretched down the block and around the corner as the gates were opened at the Pet Wellness Fair. There are yellow arrows on the floor that you're going to follow and they'll help you out. Thank you. Thank you. Assembly member Santiago and his staff put together this event to provide no-cost pet services and resources. We talked with parents about why they enjoy having a pet and found a theme running through their answers. Pets really are part of the family. They give us love. We give them love. They help us grow emotionally. They help us grow in our health. Um, There's a lot of positive things about having a a pet around you. And I just can't say enough about it. We love them. They love us. They're part of the family. Dewey's my family. He's my son. He's my baby. I do everything for him. One I had as a child, uh, really loved her. Um, she, I, I basically grew up with her. And uh, yeah, I just uh, she was a big member of the family, an important member of the family. He is almost like the second wife in the house. Why is she important? Well, because she's like my child, basically. <laughs> and she's basically my child and she's always with me. He's my little buddy and I love just being able to come home and be excited about him being excited to see me. (laughs) And just like people are usually happy to talk about their children, these pet parents were more than happy to tell us about their babies. My first pet I love that still talk about to this day. His name was Chavez. He was the coolest pit bull you've ever met. Now he's gone to a different place now, pet heaven. Uh, But today I've got uh, a Yorkie named Ewok, four pounds aggressive little guy, and then I've got a sweetheart German Shepherd over 100 pounds by the name of Thor. A dog named Ginger and a cat named Percy. Ginger is a multi poo and she has, she looks like a teddy bear. She's about 11 years old, but she still looks like a, like a six month old puppy and she acts like it too. Um, and really the, the best thing about her is, um, well, everything, but um, she just makes so many friends like our like everyone she has like a fan club basically like everyone just loves her and she um even if she hasn't seen you for a second you know you come back in the room and she acts like you know it's it's the, it's christmas and then percy is a main coon who is bigger than ginger um by a lot and he uh even though he's a you know he's a cat so um it's uh he's a little unpredictable a little moody um, you know, get scratches a little bit, but that's because I want him to love me and I try too hard. I've got two. I've got uh, Chebby and Jeff. They're not here. Uh, I was looking around for them as if they're here, but they're not here. Um, Chebby is handsome and strong, not very smart. Jeff is a, uh, I believe was a person that got turned into a cat because he's very devious. He loves my husband and he's constantly trying to drive a wedge between us. And he like he he is almost like the second wife in the house. Mine, my baby is Missy. Her name's Missy. She's 14. She is the hyperest, smallest little dog ever. She's beautiful. She acts like a puppy, but she's 14 years old. Nobody would ever know. Um, all my other dogs are cool too, but Missy's my baby. <laughs> We have two of, uh, of our own uh, of our own pets right now. Um, we have two little dogs. Uh, I really do want to get my my big golden retrievers back, though. I, I I had three golden retrievers at one point, and that was a lot of fun. So I'm I'm hoping to get back to that point at some point. Do you have any pets yourself? Oh yes, yes I do. I have three dogs, and I'm not going to mention how many cats. <laughs> they come in daily. I have a zoo, so I have two tortoises. Any any rescue. Oh yeah, that's that, that's a whole other podcast. But yes, I have uh, five dogs. I have two. Yeah, I could be on the news for a whole different reason. <laughs> but they're all taken care of. Yes, we love animals. It's all a different love. So I love them all the same, but all different types of love. 
The Pet Wellness Fair was supported by many organizations. The Michelson Found Animals Foundation took a leading role in bringing them together. Its executive director, Jeffrey Bauman, addressed the crowd as the event began. We couldn't be more pleased to bring these very needed services to the communities that need it most. I can't say enough about the partnership we've had with Assemblymember Santiago. It's, we've been doing this for more than two years now, and without his leadership and, and the support of the YMCA, we can provide the resources, but being able to bring them to and deliver them to the community would not be possible without Assemblymember Santiago's leadership and our partnership with the YMCA. Because as even though the pandemic we're hoping bless is, is easing, the pain that the fam families are, are feeling and the suffering that's happening still exists. With rising prices, rising challenges that families are, are struggling with, we want to bring at least some measure of relief. And families, as we define them, not only are parents and kids and grandmothers and, and, and uh, aunts and uncles, but it's also the pets. Pets help make families and bring families together and they're part of our families. And so we, don't, we wanna make sure that the entire family is not neglected, but that we are actually serving the entire, uh, make easing some burden. So today you'll see that we have uh, uh, veterinary services, vaccinations available to families, uh, uh, grooming services, and free pet food that we're uh, giving out to families so that they could take a little bit of that. And we all know how expensive that's gotten. What's also important is that uh, there's other services that also help families, and we've brought in some uh, partners like Everyone On and others who uh, bring uh, help bridge digital equity gaps. And also we've brought in some vaccination and uh, testing services so that uh, there's human services as well as services for pets. And if there's any questions, we have information booths. The Assemblymember Santiago can connect you to a, a lot of other services in the community. The Y is here to provide services to everybody in the neighborhood. And the Michelson Found Animals Foundation is able to uh, uh, connect you with uh, pet services, especially if you're struggling economically. Let's all do this together. Assemblymember Santiago echoed those same goals. We're trying to help people. The cost of gas is going up, inflation's out of control. Uh, basic goods that you would have bought for a dog, like dog food, a harness, a, a leash, even a doggy bag. Got to have a doggy bag. Everybody <laughs> should have a doggy bag. Uh, they're, they're out of control in terms of cost. And so we're trying to help people a little bit today uh, by spending a little bit of joy and helping people out. You can get your vaccines. Uh, you can get your pet groomed. You can get a chip. Uh, you can even make an appointment to get it uh, a spayed or neutered. So we're doing the whole wraparound services today. I know you have a bill, dog and cat. Bill of Rights. What made you want to do that bill? Well, people should know how to be a responsible uh, pet family. And, and, and that's the bottom line. So some folks uh, during a pandemic uh, were able to get pets. They were at home. Uh, they took care of them a little bit better. But now that folks are, are going back to work, if you're going to get a pet, you should know that it should have clean water every day. You should know they get to feed it every day. You should walk it. Uh, it should be in a safe environment. And what we're trying to do is an education campaign around what a responsible pet family should do. Great. And how would a dog and cat bill of rights set an example for the rest of the country? Well, we want to tell people here in California, we want to tell them across the nation that there's a responsibility if you're going to be a pet family. And we should do it everywhere. And that's the bottom line. <laughs> what would you say make pets so important to people and their families? They're just awesome little things in some cases. Uh, in some <laughs> cases, they're big things. Yeah. But look, pets are part of a family. They give us love. We give them love. They help us grow emotionally. They help us grow in our health. Um, there's a lot of positive things about having an, a, a pet around you. And it, it, I just can't say enough about it. We love them. They love us. They're part of the family. <laughs> and was there a dog or cat you met out here in the line for folks waiting to get in who you got bonded to? Little Charlie. <laughs> Charlie was just adopted. He's been there for about less than a week. He's here, uh, loves his new family. And you have a responsible a pet, a pet family. They're bringing him here. They're gonna get. They're gonna make sure he's got his vaccines. They're gonna uh, brush him up, clean him up. They gotta get a new leash. Totally cool thing to do. And a doggy bag. Among the supporters at the pet wellness event were representatives from the Pet Assistance Foundation, Fur Town, a digital equity outfit called Everyone On, Paws LA, the Kitty Bungalow Charm School, and the City of LA's Department of Animal Welfare. 
I talked with some of them about what they do and why they do so. Eric was there for the city of LA. We serve the community as far as um, pets go. Um, we help with owner surrenders, uh, redemptions, licensing, um, and pretty much what I do, I'm in the licensing department, so I help people license their pets as far as cats, dogs, and horses. Um, we also try to spread information as far as you know, resources that we have available, spay and neuter stuff. Um, we also, we canvas, we go door to door. We make sure people that have dogs have a license for them. If not, we show them how to get it. And one of the biggest things you could do is microchip your pet. If you get a microchip for your pet, at least we could help return it to you. Once a shelter gets it or another organization, they'll scan your pet and know exactly where it goes back to. You want to tell us how like easy or hard it is to get a microchip? Very easy. You could go to the animal shelter. It's um, Right now, I think they're about $15. Any other um, vet or clinic will usually do it for about the same price, about $15. Very accessible, very easy to get. Um, even at these uh, events like this, they're usually free, so you can never go wrong. If you find a free event or a shelter or, or a clinic near you, just run in there and see how much it is. So that's pretty much, you know, our job description in a little, in a little nutshell. And uh, what makes you keep doing this work? It's fun. It's interesting seeing all the pets, seeing pet owners. Pet owners are very, 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 they're not pets to them. They're, they're, they're little kids. They're, own, they're, they're babies, you know. So it's cool just seeing how much they love their pet. And just being able to help out doing things like this, helping the community, you can't go wrong. So my name is Dee, and I work for Kitty Bungalow Charm School for Wayward Cats. That is a mouthful if you're not <laughs> used to it. Yeah. Can you tell us about the uh, charm school here? Sure. So we are based in South L.A. Um, what we do is we help the community trap, neuter, and return community cats back to where they're from. We also help cats get adopted, and we also have a working cat program, so cats that are usually euthanized in shelters, get a second chance at life and they get a job away from people exactly how they like it. And this way you get to have um, pest control, vermin control with a very eco-friendly solution to it rather than using rodent inside. And uh, since this is audio only, can you tell us a little bit about your uh, get up your outfit here? So um, this is a, uh, oh, let's see. I guess this is kind of for the sporting cat on the go. I have ears and I've got a little tail and I've got um, gloves that are kitten um, I guess kitten paws but uh, they just make doing everything really difficult but at least they're a conversation piece. While chatting with the vendors we watched his Dodger, a decently sized black dog wearing an LA Dodgers bandana, receive a microchip. So the microchip is a thicker needle so your pet may respond a little bit to it but we'll try to make it as quick and painless as possible. Hi, baby. Hello, hello. There you go. Let's put that on you. I know it's How you doing? I like your collar. Yeah, thank it's you. It's going to scan you really quick. Oh, yeah. Cuddle up. There you go. Best friends forever. All right. So this one's going to go right between the shoulder blades. Can you keep him still? Just hold his head really quick. Hey, buddy. There you go. Hi, I think Papa. we just became best Come friends. Here. Come here, Papa. Come here, Papa. Good boy. Good boy, Papa. Good boy, Papa. Good boy, Papa. Ah, so good boy, Papa. Good boy. 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 Good over at the Paul's LA booth, we talked with John. So Paws LA, we're basically a social services organization and we provide pet related services to people who might have difficulty caring for their pets. And so a lot of our clients are HIV AIDS patients. Uh, other, other clients might be over the age of 65 and on lower fixed income if they're retired or on social security or something like that. And we also have a program for armed service veterans who have been honorably discharged as a, um, and have a life challenge as a result of their military service. And so through our different programs, we have a pet food bank that our clients can come and take from uh, to provide supplemental food and supply assistance. We also work with a number of vet clinics around uh, Los Angeles uh, to who have agreed to provide their services through us to our clients at a lower cost. So we're able to kind of assist with that. And we also provide a lot of referral services um, for our clients if they're looking for a service that we don't provide. And what makes you like this kind of work or want to do this kind of work? So pretty much every job that I've had since I graduated from college has been nonprofit. Um, I really think it's important that people in a position such as myself, I'm quite fortunate uh, and have been quite fortunate. And I think it's really important to kind of give back in any way that I can. 
uh, and it's really nice just to see a direct impact of my work on the communities that I live in and around, and that's just kind of how it works for me. And uh, can you tell us, do you have any pets? Uh, I do. We have two of, uh, of, our, own, uh, of our own pets right now. Um, we have two little dogs. Uh, I really do want to get my, my big golden retrievers back, though. I, I, I had three golden retrievers at one point, and that was a lot of fun. So I'm, I'm hoping to get back to that point at some point. What made you uh, love having Goldens? You know, it's just that they're enthusiastic about everything and just kind of happy to be included. I've been told that I was, I'm a reincarnation of a golden retriever. Uh, so, you know, it's just, they're, they're just so playful and happy and, you know, it kind of, uh, it, it really, you know, I think it, they bring out the best in their owners. Just a few booths over was Wendy with the Pet Assistance Foundation. We were founded in 1955. We were one of the, if not the one, pioneer organization to address pet overpopulation. And we um, help people spay and neuter their pets. We've grown from just uh, starting off in greater LA. We're now in five counties, almost seven decades later. <laughs> but um, we, we educate the public about the importance of spay and neuter and refer people to low-cost veterinarians and subsidize for low income. And uh, what got you into this kind of work? Um, as a young teacher in South LA, uh, I volunteered in a shelter in 1969 and I've been doing it ever since. Victoria with the Michelson Foundation runs the Better Neighbor Project. The Better Neighbor Project is a program that serves the community in a variety of ways. Uh, we support pet owners uh, by providing a weekly pet food through our pantries uh, in various locations throughout Greater LA. And then we also put on large-scale pet wellness day events, um, again, in different communities where we offer uh, free uh, wellness and hygiene uh, and pet supplies and food. And then we also bring on human services as well to our events because uh, what we've noticed is uh, pet owners tend to care for their pets more than for themselves and so we want to be sure that they also are aware of the needs that they and their family have and so um, one example is um, all last year we had uh, COVID-19 testing and vaccines for pet owners so that their pets could get vaccinated for rabies and then they could get vaccinated for COVID so the whole family leaves happy and healthy. And what makes the work of your organization, one like it, important to animals and people? I think you've covered that a little bit, but if there's anything else you want to elaborate on? Yeah, pets are one of the, you know, most uh, valuable members of the family, and so um, we want to make sure that they are uh, also receiving services. Uh, you know, here at our events, we offer, as I mentioned, wellness and hygiene, and it's all free, so any family, any pet owner can bring their pet and get free vaccines and microchip and flea, t flea treatment. Um, they can also get uh, your basic hygiene and maintenance so uh, of, 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 um, of, of grooming, so nail trimming, ear cleaning, teeth brushing, so it really is making sure that their health is um, it's more preventative, which as often as humans as well, we don't really take care preventatively and uh, you know in that sense so it this is what our goal here is today are, uh, are there any favorite stories of animals Ooh. that you've met doing this work that you'd <laughs> like to share yeah we've gotten so many you know amazing cute dogs and cats um, but I will say I'm excited when we get uh, a little something a little different we have, we've had a rabbit come in and we trim they just wanted their nails trimmed rabbits nails can get pretty long so we trimmed their nails we also had a guinea pig uh, and so it's always fun to see you know we have to think about uh, pet owners don't just have cats and dogs they have a variety of other pets so it's always exciting when we see them come through through the event how do rabbits feel about getting their nails trimmed? <laughs> it was actually very calm. I, I think it liked it. We, we told it it was a spa day, and, um, and you know, they, that made it really, you know, enjoyable for it. Recording this episode put a smile on my face, and I really hope listening to it put a smile on yours. Pets are important to everyone who owns one, everyone who has ever owned one, 
and anyone who hopes to own one in the future. They really do become our family. Thank you, Assemblymember Santiago, for authoring this adorable legislation and for participating in this episode. Thank you to the Michelson Foundation and to all of the organizations they brought together at this event. I'm Jen Hardy with Look West. Thank you for listening. The Look West podcast is produced by California Assembly Democrats. When you think of Californian politics, remember to look west.